Hey what's up guys, JB here and today I'm in the kitchen and I've got a bit of a gap to fill between the skirting and the tiles. Now somebody has done this before um, or attempted this before but I'm not quite sure what's happened but there is some um, residual silicone on the tiles and a little bit on the skirting and at the moment it looks pretty ugly so uh, we're going to sort this out right now. So I'll just give you a couple of close-ups of this gap that we've got. So there you can see the old silicone. And round here, it's quite a big bit stuck in the corner there. And you can see it on the tiles there. And actually in this area the gap is quite big. Yeah, that looks looking pretty manky, isn't it? So uh, we definitely need to get this sorted. Now we don't need too many tools to sort this out, but what we will need, and the tools I'll be using today, are of course a corking gun, or silicone gun, whatever you want to call it, and some silicone. Now do make sure it is silicone and don't use a cork. Uh, kind of sanitary kitchen bathroom silicone is what you what you need because it's going to be waterproof and it's less likely to go mouldy. You will also need a set of finishing tools and there'll be a link to this in the description box below. Now you're going to need some scrapers as well. I've got a couple of metal scrapers here which I may end up using to get the silicone off the skirting but definitely not the uh, tiles uh, that will mark if I use anything metal so I've got a couple of plastic scrapers well there's a plastic scraper there and this is also a, a kind of plastic scraper but this is also great for digging out the old silicone where I don't want to do any damage to the floor because it is kind of shiny and if I start putting that metal blade on there, it, it will scratch it and it won't look good. Got myself a brush, obviously, to clean up and also a pot to put some water and fairy liquid in. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to be doing anything with the skirting other than give it a clean, but if you're having a go at this and you do want to perhaps give your skirting a coat of paint first, then go check out this video here which will explain how to prepare your skirting for painting. Probably the most time consuming part of this job is getting that old silicone out or off the floor and off the skirting. Now a lot has gone already so it shouldn't be too bad but generally this is the longest part so uh, come on let's get on with it. This plastic scraper is struggling a little bit to get this silicone off the tile, so I'm going to put a little bit of white spirit on that to soften it up. And this is also really good for giving the skirting a good clean as well. It'll actually get the silicone, any small bits of silicone off the skirting. And really all you need to do at this stage, if you have got some on the floor, just, just wet it, wipe it over, leave it a while and that will soon soften up.
hard nails, that's always quite handy as well. There we go, so we got our first little bit nice and clean now. So I'm gonna do that all the way around and then we'll get to the part where we apply the silicone. Fantastic, that's the worst part of the job done, and I think you'll agree, already it looks really smart. Now I don't mind a bit of a gap between the skirting and the floor, but I think you'll agree that this is a bit too much. It's a really big gap, and you can see where the tiles finish right here, so we've definitely got to fill that. The last thing I'm going to do right now is with the white spirit and a clean bit of cloth, is to wipe around the whole skirting and the whole area where the old silicone was. Give it a good old rub, get it nice and clean, degrease it, make sure there's no dust or anything there. Because when we put that bead of silicone in, we want to make sure it's perfectly clean. to the actual silicone in what we need to consider is the gap between the skirting and the floor or the gap the size of the gap that you're trying to fill also then the size of the nozzle how big or small you're going to cut the end of the tube and nozzle and then thirdly which smoothing tool you're going to use now what I would recommend here because the skirting is at different heights or at, you've got different gaps at different parts of the skirting I'm going to start off with these smaller gaps and then go to the bigger gaps afterwards because what I might have to do is to cut a small hole but then cut it bigger what I don't want to do is the big gap and then come back to the small gap and end up with a really thick bead of silicone because that will get really messy. What we'll do, we'll cut the end of the nozzle. We don't want to have it at 90 degrees here. We want to actually cut it about 45 degrees. So we'll just go ahead and do that now. So I'll just take a bit off the end. There we go. That's left me with a a pretty good size hole, I'm happy with that, about 45 degrees. There we go, 
it up into my corking gun. And what I need to consider here is whether I want to have a rounded bit of silicone or actually a, an angled piece. So finding the correct spreader or finisher is quite important here. Now I'm going to start over in this area because it is a smaller area and it is quite a small gap. I was going to start on the other side of the room but the gap gets too big. So I think we'll just stick with this one. And what I'm doing here is just finding the best profile for the job. Because what I don't want it to do is, or what I need it to do is have the profile needs to actually cover the tile and the skirting. If the profile is too small, you could end up with uh, a gap still. So we need to make sure that that's right. And for this one, I think I'm going to use the, the 10 mil 45 degree. I think that should work just right. Now just have a, a bit of soapy water and I'll show you why that's a good idea and also have yourself a bit of tissue so you can wipe any excess silicone off. So we'll start here then just by applying a bead. So I've applied a, a line of silicone along here and I think I'm going to go for um, this profile here it has actually got a number on. I think that's probably going to be an 8mm right angle which I think will be perfect for this bit. So what we'll do is just really push that tight into the corner and then we just drag that along like so. Now that's not bad at all but you can see just at the end here there wasn't quite enough silicone so I'm going to discard this bit because I don't really want to mess this line up and I'm just going to add just a little bit very lightly on top there and just using that same profile, that should just be enough to push that back in. You could probably do a little bit right in the corner there. And what I'm going to do for that is literally put a blob. I'm going to wet my finger with my soapy water. And then from there just push that into the corner and go upwards. And what I could also do, just to smooth that very first bit out, just pull that along there. There we go, it looks much better. Now, what you are going to find here, if you've got tiles and grout in between, as you're pulling your scraper along, it will obviously move up and down, so you might end up with this little jump in the silicone, but as long as it's sealed, it's going to look much neater as well. I'll just clean up this corner. There we go. I'll just take that little bit out there.
just a tiny bit rough here. So what I'll do... With my finger, soapy water, just very lightly go over the top and it just smooths it out. What I need to do now is get rid of this line above, which is absolutely fine and I haven't got to touch the line of silicone that I've done. I can literally just use a flat edge like this. And I'm using my hand on the floor to keep it level. There we go, easy peasy. Fantastic. I'm happy with the overall finish, I'm happy with the corners, and I'm happy that I haven't got a big ugly gap there anymore. If you've got any questions or comments about doing silicone in this kind of job, then you know, stick it in the comments box below. If you like the video, guys, then give it a thumbs up, that would be fantastic. Just let other people know that you found it interesting and helpful. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, it would be great if you went ahead and done that. Give me lots of support. Um, I really appreciate that. And if you want to be notified of new videos and content that I release, then hit that bell icon. Right then, I'm going to get this kitchen back to normal and then I'm done. Cool man, see you next time.